What is the day like today for Stephen Stone? Well, actually, today is uh, a little bit out of the ordinary. And by the way, good morning, John. Yeah. Good morning. Yes, it's very early. Uh, we've actually got some bloggers are coming by in just a few minutes. We'll do a little bit of a tour of the studio. We actually now have the main building where we've always shot Degrassi. We now also have a second building across the street where we do a lot of shooting at the LA complex, although we shoot both in both places. Degrassi is actually shooting across the street. So we'll give them a tour of the existing building, which includes all the Degrassi sets or a lot of the Degrassi sets and the signature set for the LA complex, namely the Lux itself with the swimming pool. And then we'll go across the street and uh, see some shooting over there at Degrassi. And uh, speaking of uh, the filming, recently uh, the cast and crew celebrated passing the 300th episode mark, and the set episode will be airing later this year in the fall. What was it like to reach, you know, the 300th episode? It was, what a nice feeling. I actually did a little bit of research on the internet when we hit our 200th episode. We had a little party on set uh, with sparklers and a cake. And I discovered that there's easily over a hundred series that, um, and defining those not as soap operas or reality shows, but scripted shows, and that includes comedies, that um, air originally in prime time in the United States. There's more than a hundred that have uh, reached the 200 episode mark. Mm -hmm. But when you get to 300 episodes, because I updated the research, it seems to me there's only about 15. Mm -hmm. And um, number 16, which we, uh, we're number 15, uh, number 16, which we just passed, um, is Beverly Hills 90210, which had 298 episodes, depending on how you count them, between 293 or 298. Um, so that was kind of, uh, made it put a smile on my face. Um, and by the way, can you name the, you probably can't because uh, you're too young, the number one on the list and the number of episodes? Um, I think I knew, but uh, yeah, I, I don't remember right now. No, it's actually a show, and I can't imagine that very many of the people who might listen to this will remember this at all. It was a show that started on radio and then was on television a lot in the 50s and 60s, Gunsmoke, a West. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At number two, uh, by the way, was The Adventures of Lassie. Um, uh, Gunsmoke had 633 episodes, Lassie around 580. Number three is The Simpsons, and it probably will be number one, but it'll take it a, num a number of years. It's at 505 episodes, so it'll probably in another mm -hmm. uh, four or five years, it'll become the, the longest running scripted drama in U.S. television history. Now, you were talking about the 200th episode, how you guys had a little celebration, and I know in that episode, there was like a few instances where the characters mentioned the phrase 200, they kind of incorporated that into the script. Is there anything kind of fun like that that you guys are going to do for the 300th episode? Actually, that's a very good question, because I know we had talked about getting the word 300 in, but... Um, the episode, I, it's being filmed, I think you said you were filming that block because it's 1223, like right now, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, we've uh, we finished shooting that block because um, it was about two weeks ago that we did. We had an eTalk crew on set, Ben Mulroney, who's the host of eTalk, which is a, a suppertime entertainment show here in Canada, extremely popular one. Uh, ben, we actually had appearing in the episode, uh, so he both was there... Um, uh, appearing as himself in the 300th episode and doing a segment of eTalk uh, celebrating the 300th. So we were having a little bit of an interview with him, and then they rolled in this cake, and I think I tweeted a picture of it. Yeah. Uh, it's like three-story replica of the Degrassi school with Linda and me on the top, Mr. Simpson uh, lounging on the front steps. It was a really, really delicious cake. I actually ate myself. I started with the foot. And it was very good. Then I took the right arm, and before I knew it, I'd finished the entire body. Yeah. So you don't, we don't, we won't know yet if there's any 300 mentioned. Just gotta kind of wait. And yeah, see. we'll have to, we'll have to see. To be honest, I've I've, I've gone blank as to uh, whether that carried through or not. In Instant Star, I think it was in the final season. They kept having this cat 
this like ceramic cat that they would put in various different scenes just yeah. way off in the corner. And it appeared an awful lot that you would really have to look for it. It's sort of like a yeah. where, where's Waldo kind of thing. We, mm -hmm. we didn't do anything like that. So throughout the years, there's been a number of behind the scenes shows and documentaries involving Degrassi. And now that the show continues to keep reaching, you know, these milestones with you know, the number of episodes and getting awards and all this stuff. Is there any plans or wishes that you would like to do, I guess, like a big reunion special featuring people from the past and present just talking about the entire history of the show? My actual dream on that, and, and we've been so busy between the two series that it's slowly starting to unfold, but it will involve an awful lot of work and who knows whether we'll be able to do it, is not a behind the scenes, where are they now? That would be good, but I would really love to do a full-blown drama like movie, whether it's on television uh, or even in the theaters, where we could bring back some of our characters. Um, you know, Darcy's been languishing in Africa for a long <laughs> while. Yeah. It, you know, you know, ideally, um, you know, we could bring back Nina, you know, find out where Mia is. I think Mia is over in Paris. And um, and I forget where uh, where Aubrey is. But when we last left him, he was considering having that. Uh, I mean, Jimmy, <laughs> uh, he was considering having uh, some kind of surgery, um, stem cell surgery to, you know, see if he could. Uh, ever walk again. I would love to do a a show that had a bunch of those stories mixed with some stories of some of our more modern cast. And I think we could have an awful lot of fun with that. But, but it would be really difficult to do. But right. uh, I, I want to try it. Now, the new time slot has been causing a lot of talk online, and I know that it's been confirmed from yourself and others that just because it's at 10 doesn't mean that the show is necessarily changing its tone as episodes had already been written before the change was announced. But one of the things that I had thought of was in the interview we did last summer, you said that one of the storylines you wanted to uh, cover most, but, you know, there was trouble with due to the sensitive nature was suicide. I mean, maybe the 10 o'clock, because I know the broadcasters, that kind of thing, you know, it's very difficult to get something like that on the air. You know, would you guys ever potentially take advantage of being allowed to do more things like that? You know, and the time slot is set by the broadcaster that even if the initial broadcast is at 10 o'clock, remember two things. One is that they repeat at all times of the day. Uh, we could have something that might be only appropriate in the 10 o'clock slot, but then when they broadcast it the next, you know, on Saturday at, at two o'clock in the afternoon, suddenly it's not appropriate for that. So we are not guided by that. The, the second point is that it, when it's on at 10 o'clock Eastern, it's simultaneously being picked up um, on the West Coast at seven o'clock. So that broadcast slot really has not informed the storytelling. Having said that, entirely, you know, separate from that and not being influenced by that in any way. I think we've got some storylines this year that are more, going back to a bit more issue oriented. And I think the fans are really going to like that. I hope they do. That doesn't mean we, we don't have, you know, lots of triangles and, and romance. We, we sure have a lot of that. Mm -hmm. But we're going to get into some some topics in depth that, uh, you know, at times are quite dark. Um, so good mixture of humor, good mixture of, uh, you know, of drama, but more issue oriented this year. So now a few weeks ago on Twitter, you had briefly mentioned a new app called Degrassi Chat, I believe. And I yeah. hadn't seen anything else on that. I don't know if you can shed any more light on what that is and when we can yeah. expect it to be released. Well, I'm hoping it will be. In fact, I was just talking with somebody that might even be this afternoon, but I'm actually just going to my iPhone now and I've got a I've got a prototype on it. Uh, there will there will be both a Degrassi chat and then about a week later, an L.A. complex chat. And what it will allow you to do is in one location, follow all the tweets of the characters, then go to another section of the app and follow all the tweets of the actors and reply to to all of this. So it's really being a community uh, aggregator of everything that's happening as well as, and this is in particular for Canadians, but it's for Americans as well, tie into the much closer campaign so that you can earn points or badges for doing things related to Degrassi. And the more 
uh, badges and, and status uh, that you earn, you'll be eligible for uh, rewards that, um, you know, maybe digital rewards like, uh, you know, a, a glimpse at a, a blooper or behind the scene video or a, or, or a picture that hasn't been released or uh, bigger things like, um, you know, front row Skypes with some of the actors Mm -hmm. Uh, And maybe even contesting that, you know, if you're at a certain, you have to be at the highest level contesting to uh, get a tour of the set, that kind of thing. Now, the first half of season 12 is dubbed Showdown, of course, and you recently stated that this would not have been your first choice for the name. And I'm curious as to what you would have named it if it was up to you. Oh, that's interesting. I'm going to have to think about that. I was thinking more that with Showdown to me sort of represents what well, there's one person on one side and one person on the other. And it's like a boxing match. And at, mm-hmm. you know, at the very end you see in the 15th round or whatever, mm-hmm. I don't follow boxing. So uh, I don't know how many rounds there are, but in the 15th round, uh, you know, there's a, there's a knock on when parent knocked down and they count to uh, nine. And then the guy gets up and Rocky style, the underdog wins. There, there's many showdowns. There's many confrontations. And yes, there are, uh, there's the uh, the hockey players who are coming in who form one clique and that, you know, results in some friction with the rest of the school. But on an individual basis, there's um, showdowns between people. There's conflict between people. And indeed, um, there is showdowns within a person where they are being um, taxed to their limit uh, between what they very firmly, rightly or wrongly, believe are there, you know, is the right way to do things and how things are going, uh, just having extraordinary moral choices and uh, having to work through them. So to me, it's it's much more complex than a simple showdown. I don't have a word for you right now because, to be honest, I haven't, uh, I haven't thought about it. And the extended uh, summer promos are now a tradition for Degrassi, and obviously you can tell that they take, you know, a lot of time to prepare for. What's the process like in picking out, you know, how the promo will go and and the song that will be used, which is, of course, essential to the promo? We at Epitome don't drive a lot of that other than, you know, we supply the characters and, you know, come up with some ideas for what they might do. But when that is being shot and created, we're in the midst of preparing for the summer season. And and so it's actually an outside company here in Canada, but not ourselves, uh, that shoots the, the promo and works with Teen Nick a lot. I know some people look at the promo and say, oh, you know, a certain character wasn't in there, what does that mean? And what that really means mm-hmm. is um, they were working at Degrassi on the day. Our production schedule during uh, the spring is very, very tight. If you think about it, we uh, really can't start shooting until the middle of March just because uh, you know, of weather. Um, and But even starting that early, we've got to get 20 shows, and in this summer it's 20 shows, Mm-hmm. Um, ready to start delivering um, for July the 16th. And that's an enormous workload for us. So th- that's why we don't shoot those promos. So we talk with Teen Nick. Uh, we let them know which actors are going to be available. But they got, And they've got some good ties in the music world. They actually come up with the song and, um, and the concept uh, in coordination with the, with the actual production company. Season 12 will feature a cameo from Chaz Bono, and it's been announced that he will be a judge in a Battle of the Bands contest that Adam will be taking part in. And I know that you said it's going to be very different than any other previous band that we've seen on Degrassi. Is there anything else you can say about that? Um, I really want it to be, not that it's a, a huge surprise, but what I meant by being a very different band is there's some elements to it that I think musically add a lot, are a little bit out of the ordinary, but only out of the ordinary in the sense that, you know, like an arcade fire is a little bit out of the ordinary. That's not, in in other words, it's not just a traditional drums, bass, um, rhythm guitar uh, and lead guitar. Uh, There's some more instrumentation added to it. And I think there's, there's some really good songs that they come out with. And what was it like having uh, Chaz Bono on set? Were you there that day? or I, I was there. Well, we had a, uh, when he came into town, um, we had a, a dinner uh, at our house with him and uh, some of the writers and 
uh, some of the cast and crew that he would be working with um, the day after. Uh, so that was on a Tuesday night. And that was just a really nice experience. It was one of those we've had, a, we've been blessed with extraordinarily good weather. And, and sure enough, it was, it was just a beautiful night. 